Alright, here's my newest electronic toy. This is a 1980 Panasonic portable black and white television set. I bought it today at a uh, thrift store for, I think it was 7 or $8. And today, rather than going to a place like Goodwill or Salvation Army, I actually went to a, one of those little independently owned stores. And I can definitely say most of the independent stores are a lot better than... Uh, the big chain stores. You'll find a lot more things there in general. And sometimes the prices are better, other times they're just as outrageous as Goodwill. Um, or other such places. But sometimes you can find good deals. In fact, there are a lot of good deals in the store today. Um, but I... But like... I don't know. But they had other things in there that I was thinking of buying, like, um, they had a 1989 Magnavox portable TV, which was similar to this one, except it was in color, it had a built-in radio, which this does not have, and it actually had a composite video inputs, so I could plug that in. Um, but unfortunately, it did not have the power adapter, and it uses some weird proprietary 13.5 volt power adapter. Um, and I don't think I've ever seen a 13.5 volt power adapter, so they didn't know if it worked, and I wasn't going to go through the trouble of trying to find it, or a power adapter for it. And then, uh, they also had a little 13-inch black and white TV with a really cool red plastic casing. And that was actually only $5. It was cheaper than this one, which I was surprised by. Um, but I decided to get this instead. And they, also, they had a couple of VCRs there. They had a 1999 Panasonic Omnivision with the remote. And they had a VCR DV combo unit, but that's junk, so I didn't even give it a look. And then they also had a very old portable cassette recorder a compact cassette recorder from, like, it had to be at least from the 1970s, judging by the styling of the casing and the quality of the material that was used. I mean, it was... The tape recorder itself was about... I don't know, like, about this big. I don't know how to describe it. Um, it was probably about the size of that box over there. But it was extremely heavy, so it was definitely good quality, but they didn't have any power adapters that would fit it, so I passed it up. Maybe I'll go get it next time I go, because it is a nice little store, and they have a lot of great stuff there for relatively decent prices. But you don't want to see me talking about their stores, you want to see me showing this TV. So here we have the screen, it's just a little, like, 4, 5-inch screen. I don't know the exact size. I don't pay attention to that stuff. And there is, like, stuff on the lens of my camera. It's driving me nuts. It's just a little black and white CRT. Nothing too special about it. Then down here is your tuning dial, or tuning indicator, whatever. It is a little bit off, because, um, the Nintendo over there is outputting the Nintendo over here is outputting RF on channel 3, and right now the tuning indicator is a little bit over channel 4, so the tuning dial is a little bit off. Then over on the side you have your tuning knob, you have your switch for VHF or UHF, and then you have your power switch slash volume control. Wait for the tube to warm up. And we can turn the volume up. The volume in this actually goes up pretty loud. It goes up loud enough that at full volume it starts to mess with the picture. Makes the picture a little bit jittery. Um, so that's that. On the top you have a carrying handle, which we, you will probably need because this thing is heavy. And you have a fully adjustable antenna. You can make it go all around. You can make it twist around like that. You can um, 
extend it really, really far. Uh, and how I... It's pretty, pretty movable antenna. Now on this side we have a little tiny thing for the auto gain control, or whatever that's called. Nothing else really on this side, just decoration. On this side we have a headphone jack and our speaker, which you can see right there. And then we, on the back we have our uh, controls for the contrast, the brightness, vertical hold, and then in small little spots we have the horizontal hold and the height. And then down here is our DC input. This thing is advertised as being DC, AC, or battery powered. Um, but I don't see any AC input or any AC adapter or anything. All I see is this little connector and the battery compartment, so I don't know. Then down here is your external um, antenna inputs for VHF and UHF. And I have this plugged into the VHF jack. That's how I'm getting my signal. Um, I was going to try and use this little thing. It's a 300 ohm to uh, 3.5 millimeter jack converter. I was going to try and hook up my Nintendo through this method, but because of this little plastic piece on the end, this doesn't fit into the jack, so I can't use it. So what I did next, um, I took this um, RCA cable to 3.5 millimeter jack cable and I plugged the red audio jack into the RF out of the Nintendo and the other end is going into the back of the TV and it's tuned to channel 3. I'm trying to build a little transmitter so that I can transmit the RF output of this or other devices um, to, through the airwaves and then have it be picked up by the TV's built-in antenna um, because then I wouldn't need to have all these cords connecting and I wouldn't have to pull stuff out of my shelves and stuff to try and hook up s stuff. <laughs> um, but that's going to be a while away. I'm going to buy an RF amplifier and an, and an antenna so that I can do stuff like that. Anyways, uh, there's really not a whole lot I can do. I mean, this is the only signal that this TV is going to pick up unless they bring back analog television transmitting which I doubt will ever happen. There's a couple of low-power TV stations in my area, but they're too weak to be picked up by a TV like this. In fact, even with a good net, even with a really good net antenna, you probably wouldn't be able to pick up the low-power stations if very weakly. So... Not really gonna pick up anything. Really mean nothing at all. However, if you do tune it to the right place, you can pick up a couple of radio stations because the radio stations broadcast in between channel 6 and channel 7. There we go. That's about as good as the tuning's gonna get. I have to have it so both the sound quality and the picture quality is good. I think that's good enough. As good as the picture's gonna get. See, I have my Nintendo playing on here. It's pretty close to the end of the level. I 
don't think I showed the bottom of the set. The only thing that's on the bottom is the stand, which you pull out so that it stands up more like that, rather than like that, so it raises it up a little bit. And there's also a battery compartment down here. This thing takes six D batteries. Um, there was a lot of corrosion. Gotta get that stand off. There was a lot of corrosion inside of here when I first got it. In fact, there was so much corrosion that the battery cover wouldn't even come off without a bit of force. But I was able to clean all of that up. It also comes with these two little cylinder things that you put the batteries into so that if you open up the compartment, the batteries don't just fall out. So that way they stay together. But yeah, you can see I was able to get pretty much all the corrosion out of there. Which is good. People need to remember, whenever you're not going to use something for a while, take out the batteries. Or at least turn on the machine every couple of months to prevent the batteries from leaking and corroding or destroying the connectors. But yeah. Now that the corrosion's gone and everything's been cleaned up, I can actually get the battery connector on and off. Which is nice. And let's get the stand back down. And... get our TV fine-tuned. So yeah, this TV does have a pretty nice picture. It's relatively bright, so um, I don't know how many hours are on this tube, but judging by the picture quality, I'd say not very many, which would also explain the good cosmetic shape that this thing is in. Um, it's nice and bright. The color, well, not the colors, the picture is relatively sharp. My camera is not really doing the thing justice. I put this, like, way up to the display. You can kind of see... Um, the clarity of the picture. Let's see me adjusting all of the fine-tuning stuff. It's a relatively sharp picture. Of course, my camera isn't focusing at all. The picture looks a lot sharper in real life than it does on camera. I will say that. My camera's just being stupid today. Um, but yeah... It has good contrast, too. I mean... You know. <laughs> so, uh... Last thing I can really do is, uh... Just... Put the camera back, if it will even stay in place. And just show you the TV in operation. With a Nintendo game being played. So turn up the volume. Yes, the game is on easy mode. Shuts off. <laughs> Just like. Psh. So that's it. That is the 1980 Panasonic model TR 
5040p portable black and white television set made in October of 1980 in Japan. That's all. See you guys later.